Welcome to Swipe from the Gfinity Esports Arena in London. Here's what we've got for you on this week's programme. I'm going behind the scenes at the UK's only dedicated esports arena. And seeing as we're in the perfect place for discussing video games, we invited this week's Swipe Games reviewer Simon Miller down. What's on your list for us? Well, this week I've got the latest Batman game from Telltale. I've got the Long Dark. I've got Pat Upon Remastered. And I've got the Mega Man Legacy Collection too. OK, looking forward to that. And then we'll be going from London to Paris, where Angela has been visiting the world's biggest startup campus. It's all to come in the next 10 minutes. But first, let's take a look at some of this week's tech news headlines. Google and Facebook could face fines stretching into billions of pounds if they breach users' privacy under a new law. The fines are part of the data protection bill which the government is introducing to give citizens more control over their data. Facebook is launching a new platform in the US which could rival the likes of YouTube and TV networks. It'll appear as a watch tab in users' feeds. The man who first told us to use capital letters, numbers and symbols in our passwords says he regrets much of his guidance from 14 years ago. The combinations often led to users having to write down their tricky to remember passwords, weakening security. Bill Burr, who worked for the US government at the time, has told the Wall Street Journal, in hindsight, it was barking up the wrong tree. There are plans to roll out eSports training clubs for young people. It's after a successful pilot scheme with Westminster Council, which laid on a free after-school club in London for a month, with sessions focusing on gameplay and future careers in eSports. And we also heard this week that the Paris Olympic bid team wants to explore making eSports a medal event at the 2024 Games. So this is an eSports arena. And if you haven't been keeping across the surge in high-level competitive video gaming in recent years, here's a man who can help explain more. Martin Wyatt from Gfinity, the eSports company. Martin, this must be your office for two days of the week. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're very lucky to be able to call this home. And during a weekend, during, during the season, it's packed with screaming fans who are you know just going mental to see the the, the players that they're fans of and, and some of the world's best gamers this very much is the equivalent of Wembley Stadium how does a player get to compete here it's exactly the same as any sportsman sportswoman sort of reaching the top of their field it's about dedication and practice and is there a lot of cash involved there's plenty of money involved yeah you know it starts sort of quite low but you know there are uh, major salaries there are sort of six seven figure salaries now being earned by some players around the world yeah I'd love to go for a little look round. Would you show us behind the scenes? Absolutely. Come, come with me. Yeah, so we're now backstage. We're underneath the main stage where all the action's currently taking place up top. And this is actually one of the most important rooms that actually people don't get to see too often. This is our warm-up area. So this is where we bring the players before they're ready to compete to get game ready. In get the in the zone. Get in the zone, exactly. This is kind of a holding area before people go into makeup and into the green room. Some of the talent go into the green room. Got a lot of energy drinks there. Yeah, yeah, a lot of energy drinks. You know, these guys play hard. They, they put a lot of effort into it, so we kind of keep them topped up. So how many hours would they typically be playing for? Well, it depends on, it depends on the game. You know, the tournaments will run anywhere between four to ten hours, depending on the games that they're playing. This is a very, very important room. This is our league operations office. Do you want to have a quick yeah, squeeze yeah. inside? Let's see if the guys are busy working away. Hey guys. Hey. So these are these are two of our league ops guys. These are the guys that design the tournaments. They make sure they're running uh, according to schedule and according to plan. And you know they're kind of the referees as well, so they make sure no one messes around too. So they, they check no one's cheating. Exactly. Yeah, in some in some way, shape, or form. So we're now upstairs. We're behind the main stage. This is where it's all getting very, very serious. The last minute nerves are kicking yeah, in. Yeah, they must. Be. Yeah, people are talking about their last minute tactics, but from here they go towards the tunnel and then it's out in front of the in front of the adoring fans, yeah. Come and have a look. So this is like the celebrity moment for them. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. You know, this is the famous Gfinity tunnel or the point of no return as some of us like to call it. And yeah, you know, they're walking down here, they're getting ready. They're out in front of the adoring fans who are going mad and you know it's really, really close now, a couple of minutes before they're they're kind of ready to play. How would you summarise just how big esports has become in the UK? It's the east, the esports industry as a whole is, is is massive. You know, I think that a couple of years ago people would have viewed it viewed it as a niche and now very very big niche, but you know, it's knocking on the door of mainstream. In the UK, it's fair to say we're very much behind the likes of South Korea, North America, parts of parts of Europe. 
but you know the UK very much is a, a sleeping giant in the world of esports, and that's what the whole the whole idea behind Gfinity as a business and and the Gfinity Elite Series is to wake that giant up and, and make the UK effectively the the go-to place in the world for esports. And if you fancy yourself as an esports champion one day, there are plenty of titles out there to get practicing on. Simon's ready to give us his review of some of the latest video game releases. The Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 is the follow-up to last year's The Mega Man Legacy Collection. And this time, you get Mega Man 7, Mega Man 8, Mega Man 9, and Mega Man 10. Now, these aren't remasters, and Capcom has literally taken the old games and just made sure you can play them on your PS4, your Xbox One, or your PC. But now, they're a lot easier, because as you'll know if you've ever played Mega Man before, those games are well too hard. So now you've got save points, you've got checkpoints, and if you really want to take the difficulty down, you can even add armor to Mega Man, and then enemies don't do as much damage. Now, this is the ultimate nostalgic trip for any Mega Man fan, and I highly advise you get it if you're into the franchise. Patapon Remastered for the PS4 is an updated version of Patapon that came out for the PSP around about 10 years ago. Now, this is one of the strangest games you're ever likely to play. It's half real-time strategy, and it's half rhythm action. And that means you don't just push left, you don't just push right, you hear the time and the beat of the music, and you hit the corresponding face button to make your pat upon attack your enemy, or to just progress through the level. Now at times, this does get really complicated. When I say really complicated, I mean really complicated. If you're not a patient person, I would advise you don't play this. However, if you like quirky games, you like weird games, and you like games that make you think, pat upon remastered is most definitely for you. But again, it's really, really strange. The Long Dark is the latest survival game to come to the PS4 and Xbox One, and to sum it up as quickly as I can, it is incredibly hard. Now this is a survival game, meaning your objective is to survive, but you do that by having to worry about every little thing. Therefore, if you're hungry, you gotta find food to eat, and if you're thirsty, you gotta find something to drink, and if you're cold, you gotta start a fire. Now, the Long Dark treats this as if you're a real human being, and therefore, if you don't do any of these things in time, you're gonna die. And you die again, then you die again, then when you think you've got the hang of it, you realize there's something else to learn, and you die again. So in short, this is a very difficult game. However, if you like things that are addictive, and you like games that are gonna take you weeks to finish, you should look into this, but again, it's not easy. You're gonna get very frustrated, so don't say I didn't warn you. Batman Season 2, Episode 1, The Enemy Within, is Telltale's follow-up to the original they released last year, and I'm pleased to say that so far, this is shaping up to be far better than that one ever was. Following the story of both Bruce Wayne and Batman, you're introduced to the Riddler, there's a bunch of other new faces too, and also, there's the overwhelming sense that the Joker is about to arrive on the scene. Now, to give away too much here would be unfair, because you really want to go out there and experience it for yourself. However, Telltale has done a great job here, and if it all goes how it should, this is going to be one of those games that you tell your friends about, especially if they're a DC Comics fan, you're going to be like, go play the new Batman game. It's really good. So fingers crossed. <laughs> We're going to change the scenery completely now and head across the channel to catch up with Angela. She's been in Paris at a new startup campus said to be the biggest in the world. Iconic sites like this are what Paris is most famous for. Now, a 34,000 square meter space the size of the Eiffel Tower is also hoping to make a mark. Station F is home to 1,000 tech startups from around the world. It's hoped this new campus will transform the tech sector in France and even take advantage of post-Brexit uncertainty. Roxanne Vaza, a former major player in Silicon Valley, is tasked with running it. A lot of um, political factors playing into um, the current climate that we have here in France. So we actually have startups that have applied here that have said uh, things like Brexit, Donald Trump, uh, high Silicon Valley prices um, have actually played into why they look at coming to Station F and why they want to come to France. Startups from several different industries and venture capital funds are all under one roof. Those behind Station F hope that by bringing them together, it will create global companies. Other big companies are also running their own startup accelerators here. 
Facebook and Microsoft are just a couple of the big names. And they're running weekly workshops for these new companies to learn from them. And in turn, they're collaborating and it's helping them to innovate too. Recast AI is one of the companies selected to work with Microsoft to help innovate in artificial intelligence. At Recast AI, we are developing a um, technology that allows machines to understand natural language, human language. And this technology is available through a platform, a collaborative platform for developers and companies to help them build chatbots. That's just one of the programs at Station F. The project has the support of the country's new president, Emmanuel Macron, who attended the opening. He's pledged 10 billion euros to help turn France into a startup nation and vowed to change laws to assist job creation in the sector. In the UK, some experts say London is ready for the competition and post-Brexit challenges. The critical thing is being staying open to that talent from across Europe and around the world. So that message has got to be sent loud and clear by government and by business. And that's really what London's got to focus on. Station F is the latest project to try and lure tech talent across the channel. But the global talent pool is still divided. Angela Barnes, Sky News in Paris, France. Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget to join us again for more Swipe next week. And why not follow us on Twitter, at Sky News Swipe. See you again soon. Bye-bye.